All right, welcome. And today, you may have guessed by the title, I am going to be doing an unboxing of my personal brand new Troy Lee Designs A1 drone helmet. How exciting. So, uh, I guess we'll start off by saying I have no personal ties to Troy Lee. I'm not affiliated with them. I don't market for them and I'm definitely not sponsored by them. So this is just my personal opinion for a helmet that I've bought for myself to actually use. Um, obviously there's a million and one helmets and brands out there. Um, this one jumped out because it was in the sale. It was 57% off and that's just something that you can't really pass up often. Uh, and there was there was one left in my size as well. So I thought I'd do a little bit of an unboxing and first impressions and yeah, just personal opinions on it. So without further ado, let's get back in, eh? Uh, right, well, I guess it comes in a box like this. It slides out, you know what I mean? What more could you want? So we'll get rid of this and ignore my little helmet mount, it's not even a helmet mount, it's a head torch that I've tie wrapped onto it because I took this out for a little spin last night in minus two uh, with lots of ice on the road and paths and pavements. Um, so yeah, ignore that, but this is exactly how it came in the box. So, what's in the box? First of all, we've got a helmet, believe it or not. So, it's a rather nice looking helmet, in my opinion. So yeah, I was quite happy with that. I just went for the black, I think it's black on black or whatever, but it's just a black helmet with the slight grey uh, Troy Lee graphics on the side. The box flips up. And you get more goodies inside. How nice is that? So we have a helmet bag, a carry case, that's not a case, it's a helmet bag, carry carry bag for it. Which is actually quite nice. It's got sort of like a soft mesh on the back and then Troy Lee graphics on the front with a nice drawstring, plenty big enough. Avoid it getting scratched or dirty or anything like that on your travels so I thought that was nice you also get a visor sticker and this is basically your emergency information should you do any particularly gnarly stuff um, and absolutely kill yourself on a feature um, you can put your name your phone number any allergies you might have I have a nut allergy so that might be useful for me um, and blood type Obviously, if you really do hurt yourself and you need some blood, <laughs> then whoever's uh, stitching you up will know that information. I mean, I'm not going to use it, but some pro, some professional riders doing some gnarly stuff, you might. It also comes with some spare sticky pads for the inside of your helmet what, that the, the lining and the pads actually stick to. So that's nice. You get an owner's manual and something that was missing out of this box when I got it was the visor screws. The visor screws, they are actually aluminium and you're supposed to get a spare set. But that didn't come with this box, so that's a bit disappointing. But hey, what can you do? Um, but yeah, they're just... Uh, for adjusting the, the visor backwards and forwards, or up and down, just little aluminium screws like that. So a bit higher quality compared to plastic actually, and a bit better grip for when it's in position. But yeah, that's what you get in the box. So, this helmet is an all mountain helmet. They say you can do from road cycling to XC riding to dirt jumps to enduro style events or disciplines. Um, I think it's got quite good coverage actually. It comes down really low over the back of your head. Um, 
It's you know made from EPS foam. Uh, it's got all the really thick, comfortable linings within the helmet as well, and obviously as I say, the adjustable visor. The visor is specially designed because this helmet has uh, 16 vents overall, which is quite a lot. Eight, eight intake in the front and eight um, out at the back. Um, that is designed specifically for that because if you don't have uh, venting at the rear for the intake, the intake vents are pretty much useless because it's just circulating that warm air into your head basically. Um, so it's a nice feature. This is specially designed to, for um, the intake of air into the front vents and as I say, coming out the rear. So I thought that's quite good. Um, it's not heavy at all. It's really, really light. Um, it's about 400, 400 grams, um, which is nothing really for on your head. I mean, compared to those people out there that ride with full faces and stuff like that, there's no comparison, you know, it's really super light. Um, and yeah, this does not have MIPS in it, this one. You do get a version of the A1 helmet with internal MIPS. Uh, this one doesn't, this is the drone. However, uh, there is obviously a, a, a fairly significant price difference. And to be fair, unless you crash a lot or do lots of gnarly stuff, or you've had like brain injuries and head injuries before in the past, I don't think it's necessary really. Um, not for general trail riding and, you know, stuff that isn't basically downhill you know i think this is plenty and um, this was 90 gbp this is 90 pounds english pounds uh, i don't know what that translates to in dollars or euros or wherever you're from and um, but that's for a trail helmet i think it's lo it's a lot of money i mean bike and stuff these days is all extortionately priced anyway um so 90 quid uh i wouldn't have bought it if it was full price as i said i got 57 percent off so i think i paid 30 quid plus shipping for 38 quid 38 pounds plus shipping something like that uh so just over or just under half price uh that's obviously what sold it for me um you know so it's a Troy lee designs helmet so you know the brand speaks for itself to be honest um so yeah i was really happy with it actually as soon as i unboxed it because i actually got i bought this helmet because i bought another helmet a 7 7 idp helmet that i think was just a bit too small and it just didn't fit the side the sort of the back end of my head as well as i'd liked it to so i've donated that to um somebody else and we've got this um to be honest i'm really super happy i did um I think it's a great looking helmet and exactly what I wanted, you know, a bit tidy coverage on the back, lightweight. I mean, as I said, it's a Troy Lee, do you know what I mean? Super comfortable. As I said, I took this out last night for a quick spin and I was more than happy with the comfort. These pads are really thick with that new microbial foam in, so you know, stop that sweaty, stanky mess. Um, and as I say, it comes with uh, extra pads, uh, extra sticky pads as well. It does come with the well, pretty common um, adjustable ratchet on the back, uh, which you can pretty much do when it's on your head. You can pretty much roll that with one finger or thumb at the back, but you can get your two, your finger or thumb around it just to check, just to adjust it there. Nice and simple, nice and easy. As I say, a really comfortable fit. <coughs> um, what else? Oh, what I did think of actually, to mention these straps and you know how you normally just get i don't know what you call them like they're just a little bit of plastic that you loop it around and then you can just slide them straight up and down i find that a bit easier than what troy lee have went for here it's the same thing but if i just to do this if you can see it is it's like a cam lock 
So you have to unclip this to then release the uh, the straps and then pull each one individually, the, the cheek strap and the behind ear strap. And it was just a bit fiddly I found, um, but once it was done it's all locked in place and it doesn't move so swings around about I suppose. Not that I've really had any problems with the other in any of the helmet. Um, is it necessary? Probably not, but it's a feature nonetheless. Uh, that's there, but as I say, once it's done, it's done. You know, you're gonna you're gonna mess around with it the first time you get a helmet anyway, aren't you? Um, and that's that. It does not have uh, a magnetic fid lock. It has your standard clip release, um, which, to be fair, is not that big of a deal, really. I mean, it's nice having the fid lock. I think on. Um, full face helmets because it's just easy you, you, you kind of it's a bit more awkward anyway um especially if you're just doing like bike park laps and stuff like that you just whack it on your head straight on straight off i mean it's not that big of a deal really is it um but no that's that um as i say i took this out last night for a ride and it's even though it doesn't have the mips as i say and it does not actually move on your head at all but to be honest the the foam pads inside that i mean i was running a specialized helmet before then it was more like a cross country type helmet this has got more coverage at the back for the like more enduro style that i do now um it was super comfortable and to be honest i forgot it was i forgot it was on my head after five minutes you know as i say really super comfortable lightweight but you do feel, I do feel a lot more secure and protected, but like subconsciously, you know. Um, so no, I'm really, really pleased with it after first impressions. Um, I looked at, for the purposes of this video, um, I did a bit of research on sort of direct, or what I think is a direct competitor for this specific helmet, for this model helmet. Um, so I picked a hundred percent and I picked a Liat. So that would be a Liat all mountain 3.0. Um, so yeah, I, uh, I had a look at comparing certain features on the Liat 3.0 all mountain and the hundred percent Altis helmet, the SS 22. Um, the Altus by 100%, that is bang on the same price, RRP, that is 89.99, 90 quid. Um, so basically the same price as what this is, full price. Um, and as I say, the Liat All Mountain 3.0, which they have like a 1.0, 2.0, 3.0, 4.0. I thought the 3.0 was the closest option to this, which is why I selected it. I think the 2.0 was too more, too much cross country driven and like not as much coverage as this compared to the 3.0. So I just picked the 3.0. The 3.0 is significantly more expensive. That's 139.99 RRP. So it's 140 quid. That's 50 quid more expensive than this and 100%. And I just, I just didn't see the fucking need for it. 50 quid is a lot. You can get another helmet for that. Um, it's just unnecessary really I don't know whether it's a brand thing I mean to me personally I know Liat's a really good brand um, overall I think Troy Lee has more pedigree for protection and 100% definitely these days I think is a more recognisable protection brand like uh, helmets, goggles all that kind of thing you know so First of all, I didn't think the Liat would be worth it. This, the hundred percent Altis uh, price is exactly the same. It the features that you do get on the Liat that you don't on these two. I say these two on this Troy Lee or the hundred percent. Um, you do get EPS foam standard, obviously across both of them. Um, the Liat or Mountain has a 
has the 360 um has a 360 turbine technology in it which is basically the same as MIPS where it has like the 360 rotational sort of um, plastic insert inside so if you do come off and smash your head the helmet twists on top of the MIPS um, or the turbine technology and it just helps with brain trauma um, in significant crashes and stuff like that so that is kind of what you're paying for um, again this does have a MIPS op option which is slightly more dear, but I still don't think it's 140 quid. Um, so that might be something to look at if you're really bothered. I'm not sure how much it's, it's worth it really if you're not doing enormous stuff with it on. Um, the Liat does have 20 vents, but I think to the, compared to this 16, which is a lot, but they're not necessarily, they're obviously a bit smaller and there's just more of them. So like swings and roundabouts, to be honest. Um, the, 100% Altis only has 14 vents, a little bit less. Will it make much difference? I don't know. Um, the Liat has similar coverage to this as well. So as I said, I picked that for like direct comparison. Uh, I would say the 100% Altis has slightly less coverage. It's just a bit more, it has a gravel, they have a gravel option as well. And it's not that far different from that in it just wasn't enough coverage for me to be doing like enduro style descent riding um, and you know some techy off-road kind of trails so it wouldn't be my choice again I think for all all things considered this is definitely the best out of the three I would say they all do have the similar um, ratchet adjustment at the rear as I, as I mentioned before what the Liat does have that these two don't have is that ma magnetic fidlock um, chin clip on the bottom. Um, it's handy, not a deal breaker for me. Somebody who, you know, might prefer that over, you know, if there's an option there, they would. That's what would tip them over for that. But there you go, the Liat because I do think it's slightly smaller. Um, it is a bit lighter. It's three hundred fifty grams. This, as I say, is upwards of 400 um, or up to 400 grams. Um, I think this one, I don't know whether that's for the MIPS actually. There might be 400 grams top end for the MIPS included. So this might be more like 380. So it's somewhere in the middle. Um, swings and roundabouts. To me, you don't notice it when it's on your noggin. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. So overall, I'm really happy with it. I think, you know, especially getting it at half price, you really, really can't complain with the Troy Lee. Um, and as I say, it's got the pedigree, doesn't it? You know what I mean? If somebody, you notice, you notice when somebody's got a Troy Lee hat, hat on and you, or, or, you know, clothes on, pants on, you know, it's got that pedigree. It's like, you know, Nike or something like that. You know what I mean? Uh, I always kind of was oh, I always like a Troy Lee helmet, but anyways, now I've got one. It is very nice, and I would, you know, as I say, our first impressions. I rode with this last night. I'm definitely guess my seal of approval. Go get one, especially if it's currently in the sale. It is January. Hey, if you can get this fifty percent off, well worth your money in my opinion. Um. So anyway, if you enjoyed that and it wasn't too much waffle, then thank you for watching. If you made it this far. Um, if I didn't like it, tell me. If you did, let me know. And I might be able to do some of the things that I buy for myself. <laughs> um, as I say, thanks for watching. There will be other stuff coming out. I will be getting over to the lakes. We've had some snow here in the Northeast. I, and I think we've had it elsewhere in the UK as well. Probably worse as well over on the West Coast. Um, definitely up on the mountains anyway. So getting content is a little bit difficult at the minute. Um, I was due to be in the lakes this Sunday to climb a mountain and do a video, but it's like minus 15, blowing a gale, snow drifts, the lot. So I don't know whether that's going to happen. I may just do a video somewhere in Northumberland, which is not so high. Um, let's see what we can do. We'll get the dogs in. It'll all be nice. We'll get Zeusy. We'll get Clay featured. Um, and obviously there's going to be more mountain bike videos coming as well. So yeah. Do all the buttons below. 
do us a favour, hit them all, and I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.